So, guys, we have some insane Stadia news today, and it's on the heels of Stadia's anniversary, and we have some information on Capcom, Resident Evil 7, and Resident Evil 8 Village, as well as Monster Hunter essentially coming to Stadia. Guys, this is good stuff. We also got some new information on top of the Capcom news that Stadia is continuing to invest in this platform and that they have plans three to four years down the line in regards to games. And last but not least, and the topic that we'll touch on right away in this video is Stadia Premier Edition bundles are now live for all the other countries. With that, make sure you guys hit that like button to help that silly algorithm do its magic so we can find some more Stadians out there. Also, guys, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that red button for daily Stadia content as well as clown gaming content as I have a lot in store for you guys in the coming days and coming weeks. But okay, let's quickly talk about these Stadia Premier Edition bundles. I've talked about this now in about four different videos, so if you missed it, if you've been a YouTube Premium member since November 6, you qualify for a free Stadia Premier bundle. These bundles have now run out of supplies in the US and UK, but everywhere else they are now live. Click that link down below to see if you qualify. The countries that should be seeing this promotion now are Canada, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. If you're from one of those countries or others, go ahead and give it a shot and report back in this channel and in the comments if you've received it. This promotion has been an absolute boon for Stadia. The Stadia Reddit has jumped thousands of subs. This channel has gained a lot more subscribers than normal, so you can tell this promotion is really reaching a lot of new people. So if you happen to be one of those people, I extend my welcome to the best gaming community you are ever going to be a part of. Make sure you guys join my Discord. I'm going to have a link for that down below. If you guys have any questions regarding Stadia, whether it's how things work or if you have any issues and you need some troubleshooting, we are definitely here to help. Kick back, join us with some games as we do team up with each other, and kudos again to Stadia. I hope we continue to see more promotions like this in the future. All right, let's move on here. So a group called the Ragnar Locker threatened Capcom a few weeks back with leaking important information of employees, financial information, just general information, as well up to 350,000 people's stored info. Well, today that leak was dropped by this group, which in itself really sucks for Capcom. And well, this wasn't the way I would have liked to have found out all this information today. But yet here we are, and some of the biggest news here being reported globally is is what Stadia paid to get Capcom titles on the platform. Now guys, before I tell you what this is, some of this information from what is being told here is from 2018. Of course, I don't know specifically which info was pulled from that date. Obviously, 2018 was before Stadia even launched, and things could have changed since then. So until we hear official confirmation from Stadia themselves, we'll just have to take a look at this info with a close eye. Now, the last thing that I do want to say that helps the validity of some of this information is Capcom has confirmed some of the financial things that have leaked to be true. So the big leak here for Stadia is that Google has paid Capcom $10 million to host both Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 8 Village, and now there's also a third game called Monster Hunter Endless that is set to come sometime to Stadia in 2022. We don't know what that game though is actually about possibly a sequel to the current Monster Hunter titles. Not only that, but I found a piece of information that was leaked that I'm actually not going to show visuals of because I don't want this video taken down, but it appears to be an agreement between Stadia and Capcom as to what the minimum parameters are for both these titles to be running on Stadia. So here there is four phases that it has to go through, and throughout those four phases it must meet certain requirements. So jumping ahead to the third phase, which is considered the beta phase, both Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 should be running at 60 FPS with all resolutions with upscaling where needed. There's also dates attached to these. Apparently, Resident Evil 7 should be at this phase, the beta phase, on December 1st, with Resident Evil 8 in March. The last phase is called the certification phase, in which you should only be in this phase six weeks prior to the official release date for Stadia. The date for Resident Evil 8 village has been leaked with this data hack and the game is set to come apparently april 2021 of course there's no accounting for all the delays and 
all the things that are happening. The last thing to know for Resident Evil 7 hitting Phase 3 on December 1st this year, that would mean that we won't actually see this title until the minimum of sometime in 2021, since there is a six week period before the release date on that last phase. Just keep this in mind that this is all if the timeline is actually set in stone and is actually still on track right now. So there it is guys, that's all the information that came out today, as well as an included timeline for what we are supposed to be seeing when these titles release on Stadia. I'm actually going to have a link to that source that I didn't show visually somewhere in the comments, so if you want to see that for yourself, it'll be there. My goodness though guys, I want to say I am very, very happy to see Google invest in this platform. Once again though, this continues to dispel this notion that Stadia isn't dropping money to get titles on here. It's possible they are investing in massive games that we just don't know about like for example the call of duties of the world and we just aren't going to hear about it until it actually gets close to a launch point especially with the way that the delays are it doesn't help to tell people too early about something and get their hopes up and you never know when we're just going to see it guys for a good example of that watch cyberpunk as for the three games coming to capcom including these resident evil titles and monster hunter that is freaking amazing news and it really gives us a lot to look forward to in 2021 and apparently 2022 as we are starting to see these big titles announced for Stadia set to come day and date. And really the only real somewhat disappointment for me really was not to hear about maybe the recent Monster Hunter title that have come out. I was really hoping to see that come to Stadia. I think that would have been a perfect title for the platform, especially now that Stadia is going to be opening up to more markets and having that handheld nature to those titles I think really fits the platform well. With that though, remember, like I said, there is a title called Monster Hunter Endless, which will be a new entry and it is coming to Stadia. So that'll be really cool to see, even if we do have to wait a couple years. With all that, though, this is all very encouraging news. I for sure would love to hear your thoughts on it, guys, down below. So make sure you comment and let me know what you think of all this Capcom news. All right, the last piece of news that I want to cover today will be quick here. We are getting some insight on countries that could see a release for Stadia, as well as what Stadia Games and Entertainment is looking for. Here is a list of which countries they want to work with developers on, and it has to be in the countries that support Stadia development and have a Stadia or will see a Stadia release. Uh, two of these countries shown here are Japan and Australia, neither of whom actually have Stadia released yet, indicating that we will probably see those countries supporting Stadia here at some point, which once again is awesome news. The other thing to note here is that they came out with this series of videos today of Stadia Games and Entertainment about what type of games they are looking for from developers looking to publish their games on Stadia. This included all genres and all budgets ranging from things like 1 million to 100 million bucks. They are also giving a special bonus for RPGs and games releasing past 2023. Once again, this is all significant signaling the long-term projection of where they are headed with the Stadia platform. Overall, these are very interesting videos. I'll go ahead and have some links down below to the references of what I just showed you, but man, it is great to see the future of this platform already being planned out so far in advance. This to me is pretty awesome and mind-blowing. We are truly at the beginning stages of something that has ambitions to go pretty far, and here we are along for the ride. With that, if you have any comments down below on any of today's information, as it was very jam-packed, let me know. Did you guys claim a free Stadia Premiere Edition? What are your thoughts on the Capcom news and Resident Evil 7 and 8? And let me know what you guys think of Stadia's future plans. Be sure to be subscribed to this channel as I cover all the major Stadia news and hit that like button to support the video. I'm Sunny and like always, I'll see you guys in the cloud.